Hello Harshlanders, Harniacs, and random YouTube visitors. Welcome to the Harshlands Character Generation Walkthrough. When you first log into the game, you're greeted by an ANSI map of the Harn Isle. This uh, blank spot in the middle here is actually Lake Banath. The different uh, countries are labeled, giving the characters a general idea of where things are within the, uh, within the world at, at large. The uh, game Harshlands was originally coded by Charles Rand, a very nice gentleman, but uh, a number of uh, coders have contributed to the Harshlands code over the years, not least of which being uh, Charles McHenry. The uh, Harshlands code originally came from Daiku code, but it's been heavily modified since then. When you uh, first log into the uh, game, you're greeted with a login screen. You can enter the world, create a character, delete a character, etc. Um, you may notice that uh, you don't actually have colors here, and that's uh, you can toggle the colors with the uh, toggle ANSI color settings, number 8. So as you see, no colors, and turn colors back on. So we're going to create a character today, and we're going to name the character Bloggins. So we chose uh, option number 2, and we'll type in Bloggins. Character has been named, press enter to continue. Uh, Bloggins is actually a uh, running joke with uh, Rebus and myself. Whenever we're looking for a stand-in character to pass on word, uh, town guardsman, a clerk, or whatever, they'll inevitably be named Bloggins, so from the Bloggins family. Uh, we'll make Bloggins a male, and uh, then we have the option to choose which race the, uh, the character is going to have. You can actually go into each of these categories and uh, give a look at uh, what they had to say about them. The, uh, the Harnock race is just the, uh, the common human culture on Harn, etc, etc. Gives a little readout of what they are. They're the, basically the most generic race, so if you're not familiar with the, uh, with the world, it's probably fine to choose uh, Harnock, because it's, uh, it doesn't have anything special about it that you need to remember to play. The uh, Vinians are sort of like Northmen, and uh, they have actually, you know, in the past invaded the northern uh, uh, part of the uh, Harn Isle, and uh, that's where they currently uh, have set up their strongholds on the uh, on the shorelines, since they came from uh, Lithia and landed on the north and northeast areas of, of Harn Isle. So we're not going to uh, play an Vinian, but uh, there is that option if we wish to do so. The uh, Jarn are one of the uh, original uh, inhabitants of the island. Uh, you know, they came here uh, after the uh, the Sindarin and the Kazdul did, who are the elder uh, peoples on the island. So, other than the elder peoples, the Jarn are the uh, are the earliest uh, human races that, that lived on the island. And again, you can read over the Jarn, and if they uh, they sound like the sort of race you wish to play, you can certainly do so. They're, they're mostly in the north, and they're mostly subject, subjugated by the, uh, by the Avinians, but uh, they are scattered here and, here and there amongst, uh, around the island as well. So no, we don't want to play a Jarn. Uh, the other option we have is the Tielda. The Tielda are the, uh, are the tribal uh, character race available to play. Previously we had the Cath available to play, but uh, that sort of ran its course, and so we have uh, retired that race as a player character race and replaced it with the Tailda, who are a little bit more civilized or more comfortable uh, mingling with civilized sorts. Um, on the island map, um, they're basically just south of Vinia. So let's go here. So basically in, in this 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 area here of the of the isle is where is where the Tailda would be. They're just south of Orbel, north of uh, of uh, Kaldor. Um, the Jaren uh, strongholds that remain are uh, are north of the Tailda, so the, the Tailda tribal race makes a, a good a good um, placeholder between the uh, the Vinians in the north, the Jarns in the north, and the Kaldorans in the south, basically, or the Harnic Kaldorans in the south. It uh, binds that area together, glues that area together together nicely. So going back down. Um, we're not going to make a uh, tell, but we'll take a look at the, uh, the details we have for them. Again, you can uh, read up on the Tailda. It gives a little bit more detail about who they are. Uh, strongly spiritual people. Um, not surprising for, uh, for tribal sorts. 
So no, we're not going to play a Tailden. We're going to choose the Harnock race today. So do I wish to play Harnock? Yes, I do. So that will uh, set that in for me. The next question that, uh, that the character generation asks is what religion you wish to play? Um, if you're not familiar with the uh, religions in the world, um, Peony is a safe bet. Um, that's the one right here, Peony. Um, that's the uh, goddess of um, harvest, a sort of peaceful goddess, but she's more of an every person, every man sort of goddess. If you want to read up on the uh, religions, you can certainly do so at our website here. And there's uh, more details at the uh, at the Harn Religion Team page at lithia.com as well. But, as I said, I'm just going to choose Peony. Fairly safe, neutral type religion. Doesn't uh, it's, it's a peaceful religion, so it doesn't cause any conflict with any, with any of the other religions. and doesn't wage war against anyone. Nobody really wages war against them. Um, I'm going to choose the next option in the uh, character generation is uh, age of 18 for my character. Um, it's a good starting age. Uh, allows, my allows me to kind of move through um, the different years for the character, acquiring skills and knowledge and, you know, basically aging the character in-game. But if you're, you know, more comfortable with playing an older character, there's nothing off that as well. The next option we are given character generation is to choose the uh, attribute order for your stats. This is basically uh, in order of preference, so whatever you like, you want your character to be best at, you know, you choose first. Uh, down here there's an example of a listed order of stats. So you can even just copy that and paste it and then just sort of move the order around. Like for example, maybe I want my character's uh, con, strength, and dex to be better. So I'll move them up near the, uh, the start of the list. So now I've got con, strength, dex, eye, hearing, smell, taste, touch, voice, calmness, speed, or uh, let's say I want my um, my speed to be you know, a little bit better than, than this as well, so I'm going to put that up just behind dex. Um, eyesight is uh, a nice stat to have if you want to be able to see in the darker climate, darker um, conditions. Your, your character can do that if they have a higher eyesight. Uh, the Sundaran race uh, naturally has a very a, a large bonus to eyesight, so they almost always see in the dark. So just taking a look at that, um, looks like a good good stat order for, for a character to have. And again, if you want more details about the stats, you can also go to the Harshlands.net website, and each of the different stats has a little bit more detail than, uh, than what's listed here. So now it wants to uh, have me uh, choose a height and frame for the character. You can have them be short, tall, fat, skinny, whatever. So I'm just going to go with average, so average and medium. But you know, you can go short, heavy, tall and scant, you know, whatever, you, whatever you want really. The next option in uh, character generation is to uh, choose a short description for your character. The short description is one of, one of the more important things to, uh, to fill out for your character because it's going to be what people see all the time. Um, whenever you're doing any actions, when you're, when you're talking to a person, uh, emoting uh, about things in a room, or, or what have you, that is what people are going to see. They're going to see a golden-haired, emerald-eyed young lass says hello, or a golden-haired, emerald-eyed young lass uh, stands up and scurries to the east quickly. So you, you want to you choose something that's going to be unique and it's going to be uh, something that you're, you want people to see all the time, basically. Um, for me, I'm just going to be really boring. I'm going to choose a brown-haired, uh, hazel-eyed man. And hit enter. And there we go. Um, now it's going to ask him for keywords. Um, it's not actually going to replace my name. It's going to append to my name. So currently, bloggins is a keyword. Uh, your name is always a keyword, but I'm going to add on uh, brown-haired and hazel-eyed and man. So those are three different things that can be used to, to target me, and you can use parts of those words, but it has to be the first part. So you could target me with uh, look brown, look hazel, look man, or look hazel-eyed, but uh, look haired wouldn't work. It, it has to start from the beginning of the keyword. So choose those for my keywords. That's all fine. 
from my uh, long description, I'm just going to uh, put my short description with uh, is here at the end. Um, the long description isn't really as important as the short description because there's a uh, command called pmote within the game that allows you to situationally change your long description. So if you wanted to uh, be a brown-haired, hazel-eyed man is lingering here looking worried, you could do that with the pmote command. So again, long description not as important, but uh, I just fill it in, so there it is. Um, now you want to fill in a detailed description. The detailed description is what you what a person sees when they look at your character, and uh, this this basic paragraph of text will get uh, will get spit it out for for you. Um, I don't have anything prepared, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy this description. I'm going to put it into a notepad off to the side here, and I'm going to basically. Uh, Get rid of the extra spaces. And then I'm going to paste it back in here and I'm going to alter it. So this is going to be my description. So um, I'll just change the uh, woman's to man's. Da -da -da. Frame his face. And his eyes are an alert shade of deep brown. And his youthful features have already been marred by countless number of scars. Uh, crook of his nose. This frame is tall, lithe, uh, composed of strong angles. <laughs> frame is. Uh, and that looks good. So, writing a description isn't that difficult. I mean, I just did it in a couple seconds by, you know, stealing one, obviously. But uh, just looking at the description that's already there, you can just alter keywords. Um, you know, so like this beads and feathers part, I could just change that with, um, you know, twigs and mud if I wanted my character to be, you know, a messy sort of looking character. Um, instead of slightly arched, you know, it's like you know, thick, bushy eye eyebrows. So, um, his use of pictures have been marred by a countless number of, uh, no, no, no. Yeah, so anyway, very easy to make a detailed description. Just uh, take something you like and then just alter it to uh, to fit your needs, basically. And when you're done typing in all the different lines of your description, you just use the at symbol to close it out. And that moves us on to choosing your character's profession. Uh, the profession is just a nice way to uh, be given uh, a default set of skills. Um, whatever profession you choose out of the list, it's going to automatically fill in those skills for you, uh, but it will let you ch change them if you don't like them. So if there's one of the skills in the list that you don't like, you just drop it and you can pick another skill, basically. For this uh, character generation, I'm going to choose Hunter as my... Um, or I'm going to have to type in the number. So the number is 19 for Hunter. So I type that in, and you notice that the uh, screen has a number of uh, skills that have been picked for me. For example, Spear over here, forage, skinning, tracking, and um, just because these are picked by default doesn't mean I have to take these skills. So if I don't want spear as a hunter, I'll just type in spear and it removes it. So it changes my picks down at the bottom here from two to now three picks remaining. So let's say I want to choose a longbow. Now I've got two picks remaining. Uh, what else would, uh, would be good for a hunter sort? I could choose the sneak skill. That's always nice to have, to sneak around. And uh, maybe I want to choose a language. So for example, uh, Chelmi is uh, one of the tribal languages. So I'll be uh, fluent in, Ch in Chelmi so I can talk to the tribals in the game. There are a number of other languages here. Uh, Pagellan, Orbelese, uh, the different Jarned languages, Gazidja, Hadiri. 
Uh, the two uh, scripts are Lachis and uh, Runic. Those are available in character generation. But the uh, Runic is most common in the uh, north with the Avinians and with the Kazdul, uh, whereas Lachis is more the general script for everybody else, basically. But there are, so, are also other scripts available within, within game that you could uh, run into, like uh, church scripts and what, whatnot. So once I'm happy with my uh, choice of my skills, I just type in done to say that I'm done with my uh, skill picks. And uh, it asks me to type in a uh, background for my character. This could be just a few words, a few sentences, a couple of paragraphs basically whatever information you want to pass on to the admins to let them know about your character. Like he came from a small family, he came from a big family, um, he's uh, looking to make his way in the world, he's a humble guy who doesn't you know, want to cause any waves, whatever you want, to, want the admins to know basically. Uh, try not to god mode your background, you know, like you came from a rich family, you've been showered with riches, but that's not the sort of thing that you can put in the background, but just general information maybe your names of your family members that, are, that you feel that are important to you, like your father was really important, so you give him a name and that's part of your background or whatnot. Uh, for me it's just a test character, so I'm just going to type in, you know, this is a test character. Please ignore me. And we'll, uh, we'll fix my, uh, my spell and make a mistake there. Okay. And just like any of the other multiple line editors, you just use the at symbol to end the, uh, the writing. So at this point, it gives me a general overview of uh, what I've typed into the character generation. I've uh, picked uh, the name, it uh, tells me my account name, the race that I chose, the build, the age, gender, all those different things that we filled in as we went along. Uh, and as an overview, if we don't, if we don't like something that we did make, like, ah, oh, you know, I don't really like that short description, I want to change it, um, these are the commands you can use to go back and change these things. So you can change your keywords, you can change your height, you can change your profession, your uh, your comment, your uh, your frame, etc. All these things are, are editable before you submit your character if you wish to. But if you are happy with your character, uh, as you've uh, laid it out in the character generation, then you just use the submit command like it tells you, and bang, it has been submitted. Um, if there's an admin online, they'll get a little message that says a uh, character application has been submitted. If there is no admin online, then when they do log in, they'll see that a character application has been submitted into the queue, and they can review it. They can either accept it um, and say, hey, you know, give you some maybe advice on how to play the game, or maybe they'll have to decline the application saying, you know, you, you messed up your detail description, you uh, put in uh, reference to close. Those are the sort of things you'll actually add to your character when you're in the game. Uh, whatever. But... Um, Nonetheless, you'll, you'll get an email eventually. So keep an eye on your junk folder, your spam folders, because sometimes uh, these sort of emails can get dumped into there and you'll want to uh, keep an eye and grab onto those. But other than that, that has been the Harshlands Character Generation walkthrough. I hope it's been helpful, and uh, I hope you enjoy Harshlands. Have a great day.